Hello, and welcome to Paint It by Overmountain Games. This week, we're going to be painting up a gold Hellbrass, a Chaos Champion from the Old Hammer or Warhammer Fantasy Battle Games system. It's going to be a fun model. Let's go ahead and jump into it. I started off by painting a lot of his armor pieces in Rakarth flesh because we're eventually going to be putting it into a white later on throughout our stages here. As you can see, I'm putting white pretty much in between all of the gold pieces on his armor just to create kind of a even white effect. As well, I'm putting it a little bit on some of the bones to achieve a bone-like color later on in our painting stages. He had a lot of gold on his helmet there, his large conal helm. Um, but I think I got all of the white inlays filled in pretty good. Let's move on. Here I'm making the bottom of his robes and his shoes black for a little bit of variation here. A little bit of dark colors there towards the base. It's going to come into play a lot better later on. I also decided to do his hair in black as it made sense with him being a Chaos Waste Champion. I did his hands in the classic Bugman's Glow. It made a lot of sense for him. Um, it's the only kind of skin that's exposed here on the model. So kind of a simple, easy flesh tone to do. Um, we're going to watch it up and highlight it here in a little bit as well. I knew this white needed a little bit of a sharper color and red is a classic chaos color. It usually comes with things like zinch um, in some areas and mostly corn, um, but I wanted to kind of reflect some of that in this model and so we did a little bit of corn red along with some later highlights and washes as well. The cloak on his back is not a big focal point, so I decided to do it in a darker Rhinox hide. That way, it stays kind of out of the way, but still looks good if you were to ever turn the model over. I knew I needed to do some kind of good bronze or gold color, so I went with Vallejo Game Colors Polished Bright Bronze. Um, I figured it would look pretty good. The end result will be telling, I will say, um, but for now, it actually looks pretty solid just as a base coat, and you will see coming up shortly just how well it turned out, um, especially when it's hit with a wash and a little bit of some highlighting. I think it really popped. Um, the kind of cool trim on the armor uh, is, is kind of classic chaos. I think it's amazing. Definitely something that's needed. Um, and pretty much all the metal on this model will be this bright bronze. Uh, you can see here I'm putting it kind of on the trim of everything on some necklaces and trinkets. Pretty much everything that is metallic will be in this bronze metallic color. I needed to keep some flavor of Zinch in here. Since a Gold Hellbrass is a champion of Zinch, I decided to paint the ribbon around his sword in a dark blue. And after a little bit of cleanup, we are getting ready to move on to the washing stage. We're going to make all these colors a little bit deeper, add some stuff into the recesses, really make it look solid and good um, and hopefully clean up a little bit more on this model. Let's see. I 
I used Nuln Oil here on the bronze. I figured it would seep into those recesses and really make sure everything looks fantastic. Um, you can kind of see here it's, it's getting around here on the cross guard, um, soon to be on his helmet. Um, it's going to be hit on the trim as well, um, the tabard down there on his sash, and then like things like his belt buckle, the armor trim, the trinkets he has on him. It's a little bit of detail. Um, you know, these older models don't have a ton, but uh, what they do have is, is pretty good. So I kind of wanted to bring that out here with some good old Agrax Earthshade. I wanted the pelt to have an earthy look to it, have some brownish tones deep into those recesses, so I put in some Agrax Earthshade on the pelt as well. Of course, the only red we could use on the red parts of him would have been Caraburg Crimson, and that's exactly what we did here. Um, putting on a Caraburg Crimson really seeps into those recesses, gives us that more crimson looking shade, hence the name and really deepens those reds. Um, I think it's a perfect wash and really one of the only ones I choose to use when I'm painting with red. It is just super helpful um, and I keep a bunch of paint pots on me for, for it uh, all the time. As you can see here, I'm using rack, uh, on the Rackarth Flesh, I am using Reikland Flesh Shade, kind of giving it a little bit deeper brownish sepia looking tone. Um, I think it's really going to help once we start putting on some of the Pallid Witch Flesh later uh, for bringing out that white. You'll still see a little bit of it peeking through later on in our highlighting stage and I think doing it this early sets up a really solid balance later on as you will see. As you can see, I also put some of the flesh shade on his hands, since it's the only exposed flesh part. I started to put some on the helmet as well and other places I might have missed, doing a little bit of general cleanup. Um, we are getting ready to head into our highlight phase. That is going to bring out a lot of the additional color uh, and get the colors of where we need them to be. Here I used an equal mix of corn red and Mephiston red. I wanted to achieve a nice bright highlight uh, starting off from our base color with our wash of Caribou Crimson. I figured this would do well to kind of have some separation and light to dark tones. Um, and it seemed to have worked pretty well. You'll see the end result here shortly. Um, and then, of course, we're going to add on a lot to this part of the red. Our next highlights, we will in a little bit higher up. I ended up taking our last mix and adding in a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet into the mix, just to give a little bit more brightness and a little, move a little bit further up on our highlights to give sort of that layered effect. Even further still, I added in some Wild Rider Red to make it even brighter at this point. That way we are close to our brightest light on here, but we're going to go one step further with our large mix here. To further our mix even more, I added in some white to give our Wild Rider, Evil Sun Scarlet, Mephiston, Corn Red mixture even brighter amounts. Added it to the tips of each point of the sword, the horns, and the shoulder horn. And I think it came out fantastic. I've started going on the white over the Record Flesh base with a wash of Reikland Flesh Shade. 
here we're going to start applying some pallid witch flesh to the actual plates itself now these plates are a little bit weird it's stacked almost like a lamellar style so you can kind of see here i'm staying a little bit towards the bottom however whenever we do our second coat i stay towards the bottom for sure because i wanted to get the brightest point being the bottom of the plates catching the most amount of reflections With our white armor complete, I started to do some highlights on the black. Since black can never technically be flat, I started to add a little bit of gray. Right now, we've started off with a little bit of some dark reaper. However, I will mix in some eschen gray into that mix here shortly for our brightest points here on the folds and the tops of the shoes. I wanted to move into a brighter color on the pelt already. I didn't really want to spend time building it up um, since it is a back piece and not really a focal point. So I started off with Doombull Brown. I went ahead and applied it uh, straight onto the pelt and I think it came out really well. I didn't really want to push too much depth here, but I did want to add some even darker blue to our wrapping to make it look more Zinchian and give it that overall feel of magic. Considering his sword is glowing red, I feel like he is a very magical being. I mean, he has the gift of life, as we'll see later on. And I think that's really well reflected in the ribbon here. I started painting the banner gold and brass to kind of reflect what we had already existing in our model previously on his trim and other metallic pieces. I wanted to keep with the same style, the same kind of gaudy gold that you would see in a lot of Zinchi and stuff. Um, and we will do some playing around with washes here for our finishing touch as well. I wanted to do some more depth here, but I wanted a brown shade on this since it's brass. So I started to do Agrax Earthshade and you'll see here I get all the way through doing Agrax Earthshade but eventually I'll switch over and get a little bit more depth with the black wash using Nuln Oil. For the most part we've been using bronze and brass tones but I wanted to with the banner use gold to make it look even gaudier than the rest of the model to kind of create a little bit more of a flashier sense since he's carrying the standard on his back, thought it looked really good. For our next finishing touch, I moved on to painting the base. Here you can see I'm using a pretty watered down mixture of, well, water and Zandri dust. I wanted it to look kind of like a wasteland, but as you'll see coming up here shortly, it won't be a wasteland for entirely too long. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Also wanted to keep going with our theme of using brass and gold. And for the part of the Chaos Star here on this amazing base provided by uh, Titan Forge Miniatures and printed by me, um, I started to use more brass here for the part of the Chaos Star and a little bit of some variation here, although a lot of it's still a brown tone in terms of color. I wanted to have some dark earthy looking texture as well, so I hit this base with a heavy blast of Agrax Earthshade, so it has a large brown tone to it, even more so than the paint, and I thought it came out looking pretty good. It gave a lot of depth to the brass as well. After that dried, I hit it with a dry brush of Baylor Brown. I thought the earthy kind of tone of Baylor Brown would be well suited for this. It matches Zandri dust quite well. Um, it's pretty bright, but I think it gets toned down once it dries even further. You'll see what I mean here. And so our Baylor Brown dried down pretty well. So I actually hit it with a further dry brush of Yushabti Bone. I really love Yushabti Bone. I think it's a great bone color. Very bright, uh, vibrant, 
and it works really well for bases, bones, pretty much whatever you want to put it on. Um, so I knew it had to fit in on this base somewhere. So as I mentioned earlier, A Cold Hell Brass is a Zinch Champion of Chaos. But he's a little bit abnormal in that sense. He carries with him the gift of life, something bestowed upon him to essentially have a funny and peculiar way of essentially leaving a trail of grass wherever he goes. So even though he's standing in a wasteland around a chaos ritual circle essentially, um, judging by our base, I still wanted to put a little bit of flair on there and remind myself of kind of who he is and have a sort of homage to people that see it across the board from me. So kind of some closing thoughts. I learned a decent amount from this guy. I learned a little bit more of my layering techniques. I think it blended together really well. Um, I'm really excited to see where he goes, whether it's the mortal realms in Age of Sigmar or the battles fields of Mesynthia here in Everheart. But nonetheless, that's another model here up on the shelf. Thanks for watching.